الحمد لله الذي أرسل رسوله بالهدى ودين الحق اللي يظهره على دين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له إقرارا به وتوحيدا وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم تسليما مزيدا أما بعد فحياكم الله جميعا My dear beloved brothers and sisters أهل السنة بإذن الله تعالى um, in this hour or so we will بإذن الله revise probably some knowledge that we have from before aiming to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala together and to deal with a topic which no doubt is pertinent to every single one of us and that is ad-du'a ad-du'a and no doubt we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our salah ihdina sirat al-mustaqim Allah guide us to the straight path we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in times of trials and affliction for nasr whether it's individual affliction communal affliction or affliction in the ummah we ask Allah tabarak wa ta'ala for success we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we make dua to him for our hearts ya muqallib al qulub thabbit qulubana ala dinik o oh, the one that turns the hearts turn our, our hearts upon your religion rabbana la tuzigh qulubana ba'da idh hadaytana we always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guidance of our hearts and not to deviate our hearts so the effect affair of a dua is indeed muhim is important as Allah tabarak wa ta'ala is the one that answers the dua however there are etiquettes and manners of a dua and there are means in which one's dua is more likely to be accepted so because of this bismillah ta'ala i've sectioned today's session into three sections the first section will be the fadl the, the virtues of a dua because when we know the virtues of something which is why when we know the virtues of something it encourages us to do it frequently and we understand its essence and its beauty so we do not shy away from this particular affair and here it is a dua so we're going to deal with the virtues of a dua five virtues the second session or section rather is a longer section and that is the means in which one's dua is accepted we're going to look at 10 ways or elements that aid in one's supplications and dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be accepted and the final is we're going to look at some examples of the auqat the times in which dua is more than likely accepted will be like tawfiq so a dua the first virtue of a dua is a dua huwa al-ibadah that dua is worship dua is worship as is mentioned in the hadith of the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the sunan of tirmidhi and also ibn majah authenticated by al-imam al-albani rahimahullah with the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam he says that dua huwa al-ibadah ad dua huwa al-ibadah that dua is worship before we receive that which we have asked for this is worship it is worship wa anna al-masajid lillah fala tadu ma'a allah ahada that the masajid are for allah so do not make dua to others the dua has to be only for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's ibadah that's number one. number two is that a dua supplications is a command from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and when the person makes dua to allah yamtasil bi awamirillah he's complying to the commands of allah tabarak wa ta'ala wa qala rabbukum ud'uni astajib lakum ud'uni fil amr taqtadi al wujub aw al amr taqtadi al wujub ahyana ahyana istihbab and that is that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says and your lord said answer me Uh, call on to me make dua to me and i will answer you so allah has commanded with the dua so when we make dua to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we know that we are obeying allah in that command 
before the results. So this adds and shows the sweetness of a dua. Number three, and that is a dua is the most noble thing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's the most noble thing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As is mentioned in the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which is in the Musnad of Imam Ahmed al-Bukhari, Ibn Majah, Tirmidhi and Hakim, authenticated by Imam al-Albani rahimahullahu ta'ala, where the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Laysa shay'un akramu ala Allahi ta'ala min ad-du'a. Laysa shay'un akramu ala Allahi ta'ala min ad-du'a. That there isn't anything that is more noble to Allah than dua. So when you're making dua to Allah, for, for now, reflect upon the act, not the result, not getting the answer. Its essence in itself is the most noble thing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number four. And that is a dua sababun li dafi ghadibillah. That a dua supplication, making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a means to repel the anger of Allah again before the results the act of making that dua it's a means to repel the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as is mentioned in the hadith of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Tirmidhi and Ibn Majah again deemed sound by Imam al-Albani rahimahullah ta'ala where the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal Man lam yas'al illaha yaghdab alayh Man lam yas'al illaha yaghdab alayh The one that does not ask Allah, Allah is angry with him The one that does not ask Allah, Allah is angry with him And the reason is because the one that does not ask Allah Is a sign of having bad thoughts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala So then as you see shortly bin ilayhi ta'ala So therefore the mafhum The person who Asks Allah that which is understood from this hadith. The person who asks Allah the inverse meaning, it means that he will repel, and it's a means for him to repel the anger of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. Arrabu yaghdabu intarakta su'alahu. As a poet, he says that the Lord, your Lord is angry when you do not ask him. And the children of Adam, in contrast, when you ask them, they are angry. When you don't ask Allah, Allah is angry. But when you ask the creation, they are angry. Showing the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his generosity. And this is the fruits of dua. That the one who turns to Allah in dua is indeed a means for repelling the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number six. Five. Number five. And that is the da'i fi ma'iyatillah. A da'iyu fi ma'iyatillah. And that is that the one that makes dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has that specific accompanying. That specific aid from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah will aid and give victory to the one that makes dua to Allah. This is mentioned in the hadith in Sahih Muslim where the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said and uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said ana inda dhanni abdi bi wa ana ma'ahu idha da'ani where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned this hadith Qudsi that he said I am to my slaves as he thinks of me I am with him when he calls me I am with him if he calls me, hey, I will aid him, I will support him, I will give him victory when he calls, showing the virtue of a dua. And this is before Allah has answered. The act of a dua has these many virtues. Barakallahu fikum. Number six, and that is that a dua, that the person that makes dua, it repels feebleness. Making dua, it repels feebleness. As is mentioned again in the hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, where he said, 
أعجز الناس من عجز عن الدعاء وأبخل الناس من بخل بالسلام where he said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which is found in the Sahih ibn Hibban rahimullah that the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said that the most feeble of people are the ones that are unable to and feeble as it relates to making dua so therefore it shows that the one that makes dua is a means to repel feebleness inability weakness ajaz because the one indeed that makes dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthens his qalb. He strengthens his heart. He strengthens his muhabba and his love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The final one is mentioned by Ibn Qayyim rahimullah ta'ala. And that's number seven, sah? Na'am. Wal akhir. Ibn Qayyim yakul rahimullah ta'ala. الدُّعَاءُ مِنْ أَنْفَعِ الْأَدْوِيَةِ He said, dua, asking Allah, is from the most potent and beneficial remedies. He says, وَدُعَاءُ مِنْ أَنْفَعِ الْأَدْوِيَةِ وَهُوَ I'm going to number them, okay? Let's numerate them. The, state, the statement of Ibn Qayyim. He says that the dua is indeed from the most beneficial and most fruitful form of remedy. One, هُوَ أَعْدُوُ الْبَلَاءِ that the dua is an enemy to trials. Because by one turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, asking Allah for faraj, asking Allah for to be safe from the fitan and to succeed in the trial, it eliminates the trial. By the tawfiq from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number two, yadfa'ahu, it repels it. Number three, yu'alijuhu, it cures it. Number four, يَمْنَعُ نُزُولُهُ it prevents, it prevents it coming. When the person asks Allah for salam, when the person makes dua to Allah, for Allah to barakah ta'ala to save him from fitting. That dua, if it's answered, it repels it befalling that individual. Number five, يَرْفَعُهُ If the person's afflicted with an illness, a person's afflicted with trials, or what have you, the dua alleviates that or number six you have or it makes that affliction less so an individual might be afflicted with an illness maybe the illness doesn't go but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives him strength so he can deal with that pain and his threshold is increased so he increases in ajr, increases in reward when he has sabr and he has patience. So at times the dua will, weak, will, will lessen the effect of the ibtila. And he says also, also Ibn Qayyim, rahimahullah ta'ala, finally, and this is number six, wa huwa silah al mu'min. That the dua is the weapon of the believer. The dua is a weapon of the believer which every single believer can have and should have, and must indeed armor themselves with. And he says also, Ibn Qayyim, rahimullah, وَكَذَلِكَ الدُّعَى فَإِنَّهُ مِنْ أَقْوَى الْأَسْبَابِ فِي دَفْعِ الْمَكْرُوهِ And dua, he said, is indeed from the most strongest means to repel something that you hate, or something that is harmful. وَهُسُولُ الْمَطْلُوبِ The dua is the most potent affair that aids the person to achieve that which they are looking for. And this is where I ask my beloved brothers and sisters to focus. As we look at this statement of Ibn Qayyim, the last statement he's going to mention now, and we reflect upon this as it relates to the asbab, qubulul dua. We, we study the second section of today's session, and that is the means in which the dua, your dua is accepted. He says, Rahimullah. وَلَكِنْ قَدْ يختلف. The essence of a dua, supplication, it varies. أَثْ anhu أَثَرُوا The effects of dua varies from one person to another. إِمَّا لِدَعْفِهِ فِي نَفْسِهِ بِأَنْ يَكُونَ الدُّعَى لَا يُحِبُّهُ اللَّهِ Either the person that's making that dua, he's asking Allah for something that Allah does not love. لِمَا فِيهِ مِنَ الْعُدْوَانِ 
like somebody who makes dua against his righteous parents. Or a parent that makes dua against her or his righteous sons. Or the dua hoping that somebody becomes faqir, poor. Or the dua hoping for the death of a mu'min believer, muttaqi, muslih. Aynam. That dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not love. Or imma li da'fil qalb. Or the person that's making that dua, his heart is weak. His love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is weak. Her tawheed is weak. Her yaqeen is weak. His raja, hoping in Allah, is weak. His khawf, fearing Allah, is weak. His ikhlas is weak. All of the a'mal of the qulub, wa aqwal al qulub, all of the actions of the hearts and the statements of the hearts have discrepancies and weaknesses that affects the, the potency of the dua. So therefore, no doubt it shows us the importance of studying Tawheed. Learning the meaning of La ilaha illallah. Continuously every single day. And studying the religion of Allah. Studying, studying the affairs that strengthen the heart. And those affairs that weaken the heart so we can stay away from them. وَإِمَّا لِدَعْفِ الْقَلْبِ وَعَدَمْ إِقْبَالِهِ عَلَى اللَّهِ or the weakness of the heart, a heart that's not focused, a heart that is distracted, is making dua to Allah. Oh Allah, is Shri Ummi. Oh Allah, cure my mother and he's biting his nails. Or he's thinking about the football match that he's going to play later on. Or she's thinking about what to cook for dinner. Make him salam to Allah. Thinking about other than Allah, the lip service is not sufficient. So the weakness of the person's dua is connected with the hudur and the presence of the heart. As we'll see, bi'idhnillahi ta'ala, rabbil arshil azim. Section 2. And that is, may Allah tabarakhu ta'ala give us all tawfiq. Is the causes of the dua to be accepted. Number 1. Al-ilha'u wa sabru wa adam al-isti'ijal. Al-ilha'u wa sabru wa adam al-isti'ijal. And that is being persistent. Don't give up in your dua. You don't ask one time, Oh Allah, uh, uh, give me this job so I can provide for my family and you don't get the job and you give up. You have ilha. You become somebody that's persistent. وَعَدَمِ istijal And not hasty for the results. Because part of the dua is trusting in Allah and knowing that He is Al-Hakim. That He is all-wise. Al Jawad, Al Karim, all generous, Al Alim, they all know of that which is good for you. So the person does not have his tajal. And this is based upon the hadith and Abi Huraira Taradi Allahu and and in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Anna Hukal. La Yazalu Yustajabul Lil Abdi, Malam Yedrubi Ithmin Al Kati Ati Rahim, Malam Yustajil. When the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that the servant would not cease for his dua to be accepted. He would not cease to be accepted, the dua of a servant of Allah. As long as he doesn't make dua in cutting ties with his parents or with his family. And also, malam yasta'jil. He's not hasty for the result. He's not haughty and arrogant. I want it when I want it. I make dua for it now, I want it now, I want it tomorrow. If he doesn't have tomorrow, he becomes haughty. He becomes dis, dis, disgruntled. This is his tijal. So the person who wants their dua to be answered, they have to be patient in asking Allah. Consistently, persistently asking Allah. Knowing that Allah is all wise. And the results will come when he decrees, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So then the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, لا يزالوا Yustajab, that individual will not cease for his, uh, his dua to be accepted as long as he doesn't ask for cutting ties with his family. Ask for cutting ties with his mother. One that had you in her stomach for nine months. It's a dua that Allah hates. Malam huh? yustajal, as long as he's not hasty. Qila ya Rasulullah. And it's from the day dana and the way of the companions, radiallahu anhum, that they sought knowledge, they asked questions, beneficial questions. 
It was said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, mal isti'jal, what's hastiness in dua? What's hastiness in dua? dua? Qala, he said, alayhi salatu wasalam, yaqul, qadda'awtu, the person says, qadda'awtu wa qadda'awtu, falam arra yastajibu li. I've called and I've asked, I've made dua, I've made dua, and nothing has happened. فَيَسْتَحْسِرُوا عِنْدَ ذَلِكَ وَيَدَعُوا الْدُعَى He becomes despaired and he leaves supplications. There's no benefit. So in order, ya ibad Allah, for our dua to be accepted, we have to be a people that consistently make dua to Allah and persistently make it, not giving up, not looking like as if there's a time that it has to be answered. We just keep asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And who can tell me what's the virtue of keeping asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dua even if it hasn't happened? Who can tell me? What's the virtue of doing that? Huh? You get, you're learning sabr, ahsent. Huh? You're having good thoughts of Allah. And it's, it's ibadah. You're getting reward for just asking, subhanallah. But the shaitan will whisper. The desires will try and take over to make the individual lose hope. And believe, oh, it hasn't happened. And then he at the end, harms himself by stopping the ibadah, by stopping the ma'iyah that we mentioned. By that means that, that repel, repels the anger of Allah, that, that, that saves him from being, getting the anger of Allah, weakens his heart, weakens his closeness to Allah because of sabr, lack of sabr, lack of patience. Number two. Before that, let's stick with number one. There's an important issue I want to mention, Malish. And that is that an individual may believe that he sins. Huh? He thinks, oh, he sinned and he's fallen into ma'asi, so he believes that he cannot make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he thinks, ah, oh, he's, he's wretched, so he doesn't make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is incorrect. The command to make dua to, the dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is for the muti and the asi, it's for the obedient one and the disobedient one. Sufyan ibn Uyayna, he mentions a beautiful statement. Rahimullah, Rahimullah. He said, لا تترك الدعاء Do not leave making dua. ولا يمنعكم منه ما تعلمون من أنفسكم Beautiful advice. Do not stop making dua. And do not let what you know about yourself, يعني your shortcomings, prevent you from making dua. فَقَدْ إِسْتَجَابَ اللَّهُ لِإِبْلِيسِ عَدُوُ اللَّهُ The enemy of Allah, Iblis. Allah answered his dua. فَأَنذِرْنِي إِلَى يَوْمِ يُبْعَثُونَ Didn't Allah answer that? Yes or no? When Allah, when Iblis, he made dua, give me respite to the day of resurrection. Did Allah give him respite? Yes or no? So Allah answered the dua of Iblis. So even Sufyan, uh, Sufyan uh, ibn Uyayn rahimahullah ta'ala says, let her turku dua. Don't leave the dua. وَلَا يَمْنَعُكُمْ مَا تَعْلِمُونَ عَنْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ Don't let what you know about yourself in secret. Barakallahu feekum. Prevent you from making dua because the enemy of Allah, Iblis, Allah answered his dua. Number two. And that is أَتَدَرُّعْ وَالْإِنْكِسَارْ أَتَدَرُّعْ And that is Humility, turning oneself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in servitude and humility from the means of the dua to be accepted. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah A'raf, Udu Rabbakum tadarru'an wa khufya. Make dua to your Lord with devotion and humility and quietly. Innahu la yuhibbu al-mu'tadeen. Because verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not like the transgressors. Ibn Jawzi rahimullah ta'ala, he said, Qawluhu ta'ala, Udu rabbakum tadarru'an. He said, the statement of Allah, call your Lord, make dua to your Lord with, with devotion. A tadarru' he says, is a tadhallul, wal khudu' with humility. And this inkisar, breaking yourself down as a true servant to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Turning to him, knowing that you are faqir, nahnu fuqara, that we are the ones are in need of the dua. That is from the 
rahma and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is legislated at the ibadah of the dua and the answer in it for those who have indeed deserved that. Number three. And that is a sidq wal ikhlas. The one who wants their dua to be accepted, they have to be truthful in that dua. And they have to be mukhlis, sincere in that dua. That they shut everything around them. Nothing is important. No one in the masjid is important right now. Your mind is focused in asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with your heart, with your limbs, for him alone. Not for showing off. And you're truthful and you mean that dua. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَدُعُ اللَّهَ مُخْلِسِينَ لَهُ دِينَ فَدُعُ اللَّهَ مُخْلِسِينَ لَهُ دِينَ Allah commanded to make dua to Allah. How? Sincerely for his religion. With ikhlas. With sincerity. Bell. Even the kuffar. Ah, ikhwan, do the kuffar ever show ikhlas? Ah, do the kuffar ever show ikhlas? فَإِذَا رَكَبُوا فِي الْفُلْكِ مَاذَا دَعُوا لَهَا مَاذَا بُقْصِي لَهُ دِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, he said, and when they are in the ship and there is turbulence and there's danger, they call Allah for that, that particular moment, disbelievers, sincerely for the religion. Allah saved them. So should the power of ikhlas. That even the kafir, at that time of ikhlas, it had an effect. So what about the believer? What about the muttaqi, the righteous one? So ikhlas, my dear beloved brother, is an important element. And truthfulness. Another example of this is the qissa of Ikrama ibn Abi Jahl. Ikrama ibn Abi Jahl, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. Before he embraced Islam. The Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ordered that a group of the mushrikeen should not be spared. And from them was Ikrma ibn Abi Jahl, wa Abdullah ibn Khatal, wa Maqis ibn Subaba, some of them was the, the, the people of Quraysh. So they dispersed and they ran off. In any case, some of them were caught and they were killed. But as for Ikrma, he was found in a boat, in a ship, a Safina. And when they were on that ship, there was moj, there was waves, asifa, there was like lightning, thunder, wind and weather, turbulence and so forth. So the people of the ship, the captain you can say, he said, Akhlisu. He said to everybody there, be sincere. Be sincere. Turn to your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Ikrimah was there. And he asked them, what do you mean by ikhlas? Akhlisu. Lish. What do you mean? And then they explained to him the meaning of ikhlas. Turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sincerely. Asking him for aid sincerely. So then when they were say, uh, Ikrimah was on that, he said, he made a dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, Wallahi. He said, Naam. He said, Wallahi, la in lam yunajini min al bahri illa al ikhlas, la yunajini fil barri gayruhu. Look at what. He said, He made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But he also said that if ikhlas is not going to save me on, in the, on, in, uh, when I'm at sea, then it's not going to, no, sorry, if I'm not going to be saved by anything else at sea, if I'm not going to be saved by anything else at sea, then I'm not going to be saved by anything else on, 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 on land, except for mother, ikhlas. So if it's not going to, nothing's going to save me but ikhlas, sincerity when I'm at sea, then therefore at land, nothing is going to save me in land except ikhlas. And then he said, he made dua, and he said, or he, a promise, he said, Oh Allah, if you save me from this, if you save me from this, 
I will go to La Muhammad I'll go to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Hatta ad'a yadi fi yadi. I'll go to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and I'll take his hand. And he did that. And Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he welcomed him and then he embraced Islam. And this is because of the da'wah of Ashab al Safina, yes or no? He said, Akhlisu, be sincere. So the ulama show and use this to show the importance of ikhlas, sincerity, as it relates to making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number four. Number four is khushu wal hudur al qalb. That the person has to have a present heart. The person has to have a present heart. A heart that is present. And I alluded to this earlier. That the heart must not be distracted. And we mentioned this verse before with one tafsir. And we're going to mention it again with another tafsir. And that's a statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَذْكُرْ رَبَّكَ فِي نَفْسِكَ تَضَرُّعَا And that is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, make, remember your Lord to yourself, تَضَرُّعَا And تَضَرُّعَا means, as we mentioned before, with uh, devotion. Sahih Allah? It also means with focus and hudurul qalb and a heart that is present. As is mentioned by Al Imam Al Sa'di, Rahimullahu Ta'ala. And we have a narration from one of the Salaf pertaining to this topic of absent heartedness and somebody who is distracted in their dua. Because the person who is distracted in their dua, the dua becomes stronger or weaker, ya ikhwa, becomes weaker. Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, rahimahullah ta'ala, marra bi rajulin. He went past uh, a man, wa fi yadihi hasa, and he had stones in his hand. Yal'ab, he was playing with stones. Yani, wa fi yadihi hasa, yal'abu biha. He was playing with stones, wa huwa yaqul, Allahumma zawwijni min hurilain. He was playing with stones, he goes, oh Allah, give me a wife from the hurilain. So, Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, he said to him, Bits al khatib ant. You are a despicable requester. Ala al qayt al hasa wa akhlasta ila Allah dua. Why don't you just throw the stones away and be sincere and focused in your dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And yes, we smiled, but he was angry. Yes or no? He said, bits al khatib ant. It's despicable. So therefore, the person who wants their dua to be accepted from the means is that one has the qalb that is hadir, a qalb, a heart that is present. And this narration, for those who want to go back to it, is in Hilat al-Awliya, uh, volume 5, page 287. Volume 5, al-Hilya, volume uh, 5, page 200. And 87. Number five. And that is Amal al Salih. Doing good deeds. Doing good deeds is from the means uh, for an individual to get their dua and have their dua accepted. So when we want to make dua, do a good deed, do something that's beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and make the dua. And we have this from the Anbiya wa Rusul in their supplication. Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in Surah Al-Anbiya, وَزَكَرِيَّ إِذْ نَادَ رَبَّهُ رَبِّ لَا تَذْرِنِي فَرْدًا وَأَنْتَ خَيْرُ الْوَارِثِينَ فَاسْتَجَبْنَا لَهُ وَهَبْنَا لَهُ يَحْيَى وَأَصْلَحْنَا لَهُ زَوْجَهُ إِنَّهُمْ كَانُوا يُسَارِعُونَ فِي الْخَيْرَاتِ وَيَدْعُونَنَا وَغَبًا وَهْبًا وَكَانُوا لَنَا خَاشِئِينَ Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions and he said, and Zakaria, when he made dua, he called unto his Lord. And he said, do not leave me alone, yani without any progenies. And you're the one who leaves, that leaves behind. You're the best at leaving behind. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and we answered his dua. And we provided Yahya, yani the son of Zakaria. And aslahna lahu. And Allah made him righteous. Yani Yahya, he was a prophet. And also his wife. In whom? Why? In whom can you say una fil khairat? Then Allah mentions the reason because they used to raise to do good deeds. 
وَيَدْعُونَنَا رَغَبًا وَرَهْبًا And they used to do good deeds. In addition to that, they would make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with hope and fear. وَكَانُوا لَنَا خَاشِئِينَ And they were indeed humble and devoted. So in this verse, in Surah Al-Anbiya, verse number 89, let's break it down in points in the acts of good deeds that Allah mentions here. Number one, he's making the good deed of the dua. The dua is a good deed in itself. Number two, he's asking for that which is good and that which is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number three, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, كَانُوا يُسَارِعُونَ فِي الْخَيْرَاتِ They used to race to do good deeds. They used to waste time. They used to race, compete in doing good deeds. Number four, وَيَدْعُونَنَا And when they make dua, they combine الْخَوْفِ وَالْرَجَاءِ When they're making the dua, they combine the pillars of ibadah. They combine hoping in Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala, and fearing, combining الخوف والرجاء. And number four, وَكَانُوا لَنَا خَاشِئِينَ And they were indeed devoted to Allah, and this is muhabba, meaning that they love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these are all the good deeds that they made and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala فَاسْتَجَبَنَا لَهُ We answered him. Aynam. So ya ibad Allah, increase in good deeds. We need to increase in good deeds as these are indeed from the means in which barakallahu feekum the dua is accepted. And in a hadith an Ali ibn Abi Talib radiyallahu ta'ala an which is a Hassan hadith in the Musnad of Imam Ahmed. And also in all of the Sunan, Tirmidhi, Ibn Majah, Nasai, Ibn Dawood, Aynam, all of them, that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa that it was said, Ali ibn Abi Talib says, Kuntu idha sami'tu min Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam hadithan, nafa'ani Allahu bima sha'a an yanfa'ani minhu, il akhiri, qala, qala Rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ما من عبد where the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said in the main part of this long hadith ما من عبد there isn't a servant mu'min that believes in Allah so let's let's number it now there isn't a servant so he's an abd and this is ubudiya khasa ubudiya khasa this is that specific noble type of servant that establishes tawheed that worships Allah abd number two mu'min these are good deeds he has iman in Allah and iman in that which Allah has indeed revealed. Yudhnibu dhamban he commits a sin. As we know in the hadith, Kullu bani Adam khatta. All of the children of Adam, they sin, they err. Khayru khatta'ina tawabun. But the best of those that err are the ones who make tawbah, repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But what did this person, this believer, what did he do? Allah's messenger Sallallahu said that this individual, there is an individual like him that falls into sins, which we all do. Yatawadda, So he does a good deed, he does wudu. Fayuhsinu tuhur. And he is excellent in making his wudu, and according to the sunnah. Number four. Thumma yusalli raka'atain. Number five. And he prays two raka'ah. Illa fayastaghfirullah. Number six. فَيَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهُ إِلَّا غَفَرَ اللَّهُ لَهُ There isn't anybody that does it except Allah will forgive them. All of these are good deeds. What are the good deeds, Ikhwan? Number one, he's a what? He's an abd, which means taslam, yes or no? Aslama lillah. Ah, he devoted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number two, he's a believer. And we know the iman. What's iman, Ikhwan? What's iman? Ah, what's the definition of Iman according to Ahl Sunnah? Believe in a heart, Ibadah. Mm. Statement of a tongue, Iman, Ibadah. Mm. Action of the limb, limbs, Ibadah. All of this is part of his Iman. And after that? Huh? Yazid Ritawa Inayna, wa Yankuz, be al Masiyah. And he fell into a Masiyah, didn't he? Yes or no? But what did he do? 
Did he just wallow in his sins? What did he do? He did what? Will do good deeds. Yes or no? And then afterwards, what about his wudu? How was his wudu? Huh? It's according to the sunnah, which means he had ilm. Yes or no? He had ilm, he had knowledge. The fruits of knowledge of the sifr to wudu, of how the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam done wudu. Taibadin. Huh? He prayed rakatain ibadah. And all of the qiraat al-fatiha and the athkar, Allahu Akbar for every movement. Sami Allah liman hamida. Rabbana wa And then what did he do after all of these good deeds? Huh? He done his tighfar, yeah. He wasn't arrogant. He didn't feel like he was somebody of superior nature because he done all of these hasanat. But yet he still did what? Sought forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The person does not do this except that Allah forgives him. Showing the fruits of good deeds and doing acts of good deeds in getting one's dua accepted. Barakallahu feekum. Number six. And that is the food you eat, the clothes you wear, has to be pure. From the means in having one's dua accepted is that the person's risk provisions is halal. So, his clothes is halal, his food is halal. Based upon the hadith of Abi Hurairah radiyallahu an, qala qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ayyu an nas, inna allaha tayyibun la yaqbilu illa tayyiba. And that's all mankind, the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in this hadith of Abi Hurairah radiyallahu an, all mankind, verily Allah is pure and does not accept everything except that is pure. وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ عَمْرَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ بِمَا عَمْرَ بِهِ الْمُرْسَلِينَ That verily Allah has commanded the believers of that which he commanded the prophets, the messengers. يَا يُوَ الرُّسُلْ كُلُوا مِنَ الطَّيِّبَاتِ وَعْمِلُوا صَالِحًا إِنِّي بِمَا تَعْمِلُونَ عَلِيمٌ Where he said, subhanahu wa ta'ala, O messengers, اَيْ يُوَ الرُّسُلْ يَا اَيْ يُوَ الرُّسُلْ O messengers, كُلُوا مِنَ الطَّيِّبَاتِ and do good deeds in the bimata'amaluna alim, because indeed I am aware of that which you do. Up until the hadith, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, thumma dhakar rajul yutilu safar. Then the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned this hadith that is mashur, well known, inshallah, about an individual who, number one, was on a long journey. Ash'af agbar. His hair was disheveled and he was dusty from the. Uh, results of traveling Yamudu your day So he's traveling It's on a long travel And some of the ulama have mentioned is on Hajj A journey for Hajj So it's Safar Ta'a It's a journey of obedience The Sheffield, long journey Hair all over the place Dusty because of the sand And the desert Showing that he was walking And it was a difficult journey يَمُدُّ يَدَيْهِ إِلَى السَّمَاءِ And then he's also done something else. He's raised his hands to the heavens, which is from the wasail, and from the means of the dua being accepted, as we do with point number nine. يَا رَبِّ يَا رَبِّ He said, يَا رَبِّ يَا رَبِّ أَوَسِيلَ بِالْأَسْمَاءِ لَا يَتَبَارَكُ تَعَلَى And he says, oh my Lord, oh my Lord. So just repeat, what has this person done before he done his dua? What did he do? Number one. What was his state? He was on a long journey. Secondly, huh? he was disheveled. Huh? Number three, he raised his hands. What other wasila did he use? Ya Rabbi, Ya Rabbi. Huh? He's used the means of Allah's names, subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rabb, for his dua. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, وَمَا طَعَمُهُ حَرَامُ وَمَا شْرَبُهُ حَرَامُ وَمَا الْبَسُهُ حَرَامُ وَغُضِيَ بِالْحَرَامُ أَنَّ يُسَجَابُ اللَّهِ أَنَّ يُسَجَابُ اللَّهِ After all of those means that we're going to deal with in the next points, that aid in your dua being accepted, 
The Messenger وسلم, mentioned, he said, but his clothing is, uh, sorry, his food is haram. He eats that which he earns is haram. The food that he eats is haram. His clothing is haram. That which he drinks is haram. He indulges in haram. For Anna, you said, how is this supposed to be? How does he expect his dua to be accepted? How does he expect his dua to be accepted? So the mafhum, the inverse meaning, the mafhum, the inverse meaning is that the one whose food is halal, his earnings are halal, his provisions are halal, his clothing is halal, it's a means, what? For the dua to be accepted. As the one whose clothing is haram, and his food is haram, and his earnings is haram, it's a hajiz. It's an obstacle for his dua to be mother accepted. Number seven. And that is a tawbah wal istighfar. From the means of one's dua being accepted is that the person recognizes his errors and his sins. He admits it. He doesn't shy away from it in front of his Lord. He doesn't try and fool himself that he hasn't fallen into that particular sin. So he makes the istighfar. He makes tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he seeks forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as is done by Musa where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Rabbi inni zalamtu nafsi faghfirli In Surah Al-Qasas where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that Musa alayhi salatu wasalam he says Rabbi inni zalamtu nafsi O oh my Lord, I have oppressed myself. I'tiraf bidhamb. I'tiraf bidhambi. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He's admitting his shortcoming. Inni dhalam tu nafsi. Faghfirli. Forgive me. So he used the means of i'tiraf and admitting to his errors for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to Forgive him. فَغَفَرَ لَهُ إِنَّهُ الْغَفُورُ رَحِيمُ فَغَفَرَ لَهُ And Allah in the same verse showed that the dua was accepted. The istighfar. Because Allah is all forgiving and all merciful. Why? Because he, and to do tawbah and to do istighfar, to seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to make tawbah, you have to have اِعْتِرَافْ بِالذَّنْبِ وَالنَّدْمْ يَنْتَ النَّدْمَانْ وَتَنْدَمْ that you regret the sin, that you admit the sin. And that is from Barakallahu Fikum, the way of the Anbiya in making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Likewise, we have a narration which is in Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Muslim, <coughs> that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qala li Abu Bakr Siddiq radhi la an. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Abu Bakr, Qulil lahumma inni zalamtu nafsi. The Messenger uh, uh, cultivated Abu Bakr on the means to making dua and seeking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. قُلِ اللَّهُمَّ إِنِّي ظَلَمْتُ نَفْسِي Say, oh Allah, I have oppressed myself. ظُلْمًا kathira. I have oppressed myself with many a oppression. وَيَغْفِرُ ذُنُوبَ إِلَا أَنْتِ And none forgives sins except you. فَاغْفِرْ لِي مَغْفِرَةً مِنْ إِنْدِكْ Give me that forgiveness, that forgiveness that is with you. وَرْحَمْنِي إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ and have mercy upon me, because verily, you are the all-merciful and of forgiving. I'm going to put this in points again, shall we, inshallah? So this is what the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa commanded Abu Bakr with. Number one, al-i'tiraf, to admit. He said, قُلْ لِلَّهُمَ إِنِّي ظَلَمْتُ نَفْسِي ذُلْمًا كَثِيرًا So he admitted, he yani admit to your, 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 your shortcoming. Oh Allah, I have, I have oppressed myself with, a, with many of an oppression. Number two, And this is iftiqar ila Allah ta'ala. The person is humbling himself. Is the mic on? Uh, the person is humbling himself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are the one who forgives sins. This is tawheed, ya ibadallah. A nafi wa ithbat. La yaghfiru nafi, adhanuba illa ant ithbat. That none forgives except for you. La ilaha illallah. So he's using tawheed. The Prophet is cultivating Abu Bakr Siddiq with the 
pillars of a tawheed, the pillars of la ilaha illallah in making istighfar, in making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's number three, sir. Number three. No, number two, sir. Number two. And number three, faghfirli. The ibadah of istighfar. Then turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seek forgiveness from Allah. And then finally, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam guided Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu to using two names from the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that are connected to the request. And that is Al-Ghafoor and Al-Rahim, the All-Merciful and the oft forgiving Barakallahu feekum. Number eight. So uh, regarding number seven, what we can learn from this point is not to be stubborn in our sins or try and fool ourselves that we didn't do it when we know we did. But rather we admit our sins to Allah. Inni dhalamtu nafsi dhulman kathira. Adam did the dua. Musa did the dua. Alayhim as salam. And the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Rabba ashabahu radhilaw alam anhum al hadha dua. He cultivated them upon this dua, alayhi salatu wa sallam. So we don't have this isra, this stubbornness upon sins, upon ma'asi, fooling ourselves that we didn't fall into that sin when you know you did. Own it. Turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Admit. Show your humility and your regret. Because these are from the means, barakallahu feekum, for the dua to be madha accepted. Number eight. And that is Adam al-dua bi ithmin al qati'atir rahm, which we touched on uh, earlier. That the means of, make, of the dua being accepted is not making dua for, in cutting ties with one's parents. Not making dua in cutting ties with one's parents. And this is based upon the hadith of Abi Sa'id al-Khudri, Abi Sa'id al-Khudri radiyallahu an, anna nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal, ma min muslimin yad'u bi da'watin laysa fiha ithm. Ya isma'u. Listen to this hadith. The messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, that there isn't a Muslim that makes a dua for one thing, that laysa fiha ithmun, that in that dua, there isn't a sin, and a sinful request. وَلَا قَطِيعَةُ rahim. And in that dua, there isn't a request to sever times with your family members. I don't like them. I want to, oh Allah, distance, I be like, distance me from them. The dua is free from that. There isn't a Muslim that doesn't make a dua with sins. And a dua, barakallahu feekum, that is to uh, ask him for uh, severing ties of kinship except that the person who is on this condition Allah will give them one of three things Allah will give them one of three things except either that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would answer his dua and the dua will come swiftly the results of that dua will come swiftly the answer to the dua will come swiftly or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will store that for him and the hereafter or Allah will repel Something similar to it from evil, equal to it. So therefore, the person who doesn't make that dua of ithm. And ithm, dua, the ulama have mentioned, is like asking Allah to become a prophet. Naam, the ulama mentioned. The, uh, from those duas that is hated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is like those duas that are not possible, like asking Allah to live forever. In this dunya, asking Allah for prophethood. And the person who does not ask this and does not ask to sever ties, Allah will give them, answer their dua, or give them one of the three things as it relates to their dua. What are those three things? Number one, either, it will be answered. 
swiftly. Secondly, it will be stored. Thirdly, or something, a calamity similar to it, Allah will repel it from him. So, which point of our lesson does this help us with today? In regards to the asbab, the means of uh, the dua being accepted. Which point have we studied today, this particular point, hadith, helps us with? Hmm? Sabu, the first point, yes or no? Do you remember the first point? What was the first point, Ikhwan? Alilha wa adam mada isti'jal. That a person does not, is not rushing for the results. Because if it is for the st- in store for you for the hereafter, you will not find out until when? The hereafter. So you have to have sabr. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from his hikmah has indeed ordained that something else similar to it, equal to it, will be given or repelled from you, sometimes you won't even know that's the reason. So therefore, nothing's upon us except to submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and be patient when we make dua to our Rahman. Number nine. So number eight, just to summarize that, number eight, Barakallahu Fikum, is not to ask for sins or asking for severing tithes. If you don't do this in your dua, it's a means, Barakallahu Fikum, for the dua to be accepted. Number nine. And that is praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and glorifying him. Whilst you're making that dua. A tamjeed wa tahmeed athna wa thana alayhi azza wa jal athna dua. Yani bayni yadayi dua. When you're doing the dua, the supplication to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you praise him, you glorify him. And this is based upon the hadith of Fadalat ibn Ubaid. Fadalatu and Fadalat ibn Ubaid radiyallahu an where he mentioned that he heard the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Samiya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Rajalan yad'u Fi salati lam yumajjid illahi ta'ala Lam yumajjid illaha ta'ala Wa lam yusalli ala al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Faqala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Ajjala hadha Thumma da'ahu faqala lahu Aw li ghayrihi Iza salla ahadukum fal yabda bi tahmeed illah وَالثَّنَاءِ عَلَيْهِ ثُمَّ لِيُصَلِّ عَلَى النَّبِي ثُمَّ لِيَدْعُوا بَعْدَ بِمَا شَاءَ When the Messenger of Allah Sallam, he saw an individual man, the man was making dua, he was making dua in his salah, and he didn't praise Allah, he straight away asked for his request. Without praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, number one, and without sending salams and salah upon the Messenger of Allah Sallam, number two. So the Messenger of Allah Sallam said, this person is hasty. أَجَّلَ هَذَا He's hasty. And then afterwards, the messenger called him, Da'ahu sallallahu alayhi and he said, if, ahadukum, if any of you prays, then let him start by praising Allah, saying alhamdulillah, and complimenting Allah, and then sending salam on Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and then he can ask for whatever he wishes. Couple this narration with another narration, which is in Nasa'i. It's a riwayah fi Nasa'i, where the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said, Ud'u to Jab. Wasel tu'ta. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, after hearing an individual, praise Allah. Glorify Allah. Send salam and salah on Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to him, Make your dua, it will be given to you. Ask and you receive, meaning because of the way that you have made your dua. By beginning by praising Allah, complimenting Allah, glorifying Allah, sending salah, salah, and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to jab. Make a dua, you'll be answered. Was al tu'ta. Ask and you'll be given. Hey now. Number 10, and that's Raful Yadain. From the means is raising one's hands, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Based on the hadith of Salman, al-Farisi, radiyallahu ta'ala an, where the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned in this hadith, which is in the sunan of Tirmidhi and others, that the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, that the person who raises their hands and asks Allah, Allah would not leave their hands empty. 
destitute and empty, meaning Allah will answer their dua by raising when they raise their hands. So this is from the means, as we know, for the dua to be accepted. However, let's look at some benefits that we can take from this act of raising dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number one, it affirms the ulu of Allah. The person is affirming that Allah is above. And that is from the correct aqidah and also the good deeds. Number two, it shows tawadu. The person is showing inkisar wa tadarru. By raising their hands, it shows that they're humble and they're devoting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's adding more means for the dua to be accepted by raising the hands. And number three also, it shows the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That he's Samir dua, he's the one that hears, the all hearer of the dua and the one that answers the dua from his rahmah. And from his karam and that he's generous, the all generous subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's tawheed in the beginning, tawheed in the middle, and tawheed at the end. All of raising of the hands directs the individual to the tawheed of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. That was number 10, sir. Is that enough? Are we tired? Yes, we are. Yes, we are. One, 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 a brother in front of me, I won't say his name. I asked her, you tired? He's gone. <laughs> he just looks at me like... <laughs> so with that, I'll just give you a list. Shall I give you a list for this next point? A list. Quick list. Okay. The means for the dua to be accepted. Uh, the timing is the means. The timing is the means. So you can make this point number 11, and that is the time that you make your dua. Number one... Um, No, there's another one. Labas. Labas. Number one, in the middle of the night, the last part of the night. As is mentioned in the hadith of Abi Huraira, radiallahu ta'anhu, in Sahih Bukhari. Number two, is that better like that? Number two, and that is the dua when you wake up in the middle of the night. From the night. And that is in the hadith of Ubad ibn Samit, which is in Bukhari. It's from the times to make dua. Ustajiba lahu. It's answered for him, it's mentioned in this hadith. Number three, a dua fi sujood. And that is making dua when one is in prostration. Again, from the hadith of Abi Hurairah, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, in Sahih Muslim. أقرب ما يكون العبد من ربه وهو ماذا ساجد فأكثر الدعاء. The closest that an individual gets to their Lord is in sujood, so make plenty dua sujood in sujood. Make plenty dua with Allah subhanahu wa taala to Allah subhanahu wa taala. Number four, بين العذان والإقامة. بين العذان والإقامة. And this is a hadith of Anas ibn Malik. رضي الله تعالى عنه لا يرد الدعاء بين الأذان والإقامة that the dua بين الأذان والإقامة is not rejected number five and that is a dua دبر الصلوات المكتوبة this requires detail and that is dua some of the ulama have mentioned before you say السلام عليكم in salah and some have mentioned after and this is based upon the hadith of Abi Umama, radiyallahu ta'ala an, which is in the Sunan of Abi Dawood and Tirmidhi. When the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Qila ya Rasulullah, he said to the Messenger of Allah, ayyu dua asma'u, ayyu dua i asma'u. What's the most, the dua that is mostly answered, most likely to be answered? And he mentioned, Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Jawfil Layl in the heart of the night, middle of the night, and the last part of the night, Wadubudu Salawat al Maktuba. And before you say salam in the obligatory prayers. Number six, a dua fi sa'at al Jum'ah. And this is what we know as well, and it's practiced, but in the light ta'ala, a dua, 
and a particular moment in the day of Juma, which is approach, which we are in right now. May Allah tabarak wa ta'ala make us reach that. And that's in the hadith of Abi Hurata radiallahu ta'ala an. When the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, fil jama'ati li sa'a la yuwafiquha muslimun yas'alullaha fiha khayran illa attahu iya. That there isn't a moment, a time in the Yom Juma that the Muslim, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that time, except that Allah gives it to him. Number seven. And that is a dua in the siyam. The individual is fasting. And also a dua fi safar, which is number eight. So number seven is when one is fasting, and number eight is when one is traveling. Based upon two narrations, shall I mention the two narrations to you? The first narration is an Abi Hurairah radiyallahu an. قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ثلاثة لا يرد دعاهم. Three individuals, the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم mentioned this hadith of Abi Hurairah, um, which is in the Musnad of Imam Ahmed, is Hassan bi Turqih. It's a sound narration that three individuals, their supplications will not be rejected. The just ruler, the one that is fasting until he breaks his fast and the supplication of the oppressed, the supplication of the wada'atul madhlum, wada'watu al-madhlum. And in another riwayah, thalathatun da'awatin yusajabu lahun, another narration, and this one is in Ibn Majah, three individuals that their du'as will not be rejected, and that number one is da'atul madhlum, the oppressed individual, the wada'atul musafir, the one that is traveling, and da'watul walid li waladi, and the supplication of a father to his son. So, yeah, Ibad Allah, increase in supplication to Allah, making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whilst you are traveling, and increase in making dua to Allah for our children. Allah yahfadhum. And finally, Barakallahu feekum, the last point I want to make, Jazakumullah khaira, is a statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ إِبَادِ عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبُ وَجِبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّعْي إِذَا دَعْن فَلِسْتَجِبُوا لِي وَلِيُؤْمِنُوا بِي لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ The statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Baqarah where he says Subhana And if my servants ask you about me then say I am close وَجِبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّعْي إِذَا دَعْن I answer the supplication of the one who asks when they ask So let them comply yani, to Allah's commandments and obey Allah's commandments and believe in Allah perhaps that day will be uh, guided Imam Sa'di rahimullah ta'ala he said فَمَنْ دَعَ رَبَّهُ this is the conclusion of our session today Imam Sa'di rahimullah ta'ala he says فَمَنْ دَعَ رَبَّهُ بِقَلْبٍ حَادِد so whoever supplicates to their Lord with a present heart. Wadu'a in mashhur, mashru' with a legislative supplication, a supplication that's not full of sin. And if there isn't a, an ob obstacle in preventing the dua from being accepted, what are some of the obstacles we mentioned today? Eating haram, haram risk and clothing, etc. If there isn't uh, a man yet, an obstacle for that individual to have to be answered, especially if he comes with the means. And how many means have we studied today? How many means? Huh? 11. We studied 11. Now, if he comes with the means for the dua to be answered, and then he mentioned, however, that which is all of this is built upon. All of the means, all of staying away from the obstacles is that the person has to answer to the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The person has to follow the Quran and the Sunnah. Allah said, so let him answer to the call, meaning the call of the prophets, the call to of Tawheed, the call to following the way of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is the fundamental means, this is the fundamental element of the dua being accepted, and that is ittiba 
following sunnah rasulillah sallallahu alaihi wasallam following the sunnah of the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam so we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us be from those that die upon sunnah live upon sunnah and that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts all of our supplications amin hadallahu a'lam and with this we conclude wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barik ala nabiyyina muhammadin wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in walhamdulillahi rabbil alamin hayakumullah too tired for the questions i won't look at the anyway. Oh, Yella, tell me. Who can tell me? Do you have the times? Did you write them? Tal. Come. Tal. Yella. Yella. No, no. Sorry, sorry. Malish, you stay where you are. Yeah? Okay, then. Father. Number one. What's the... No, read it. Like I read. Number one. The middle of the night. Middle of the night. night. The hour of Jummah. Hour of Jummah. Or fasting. Fasting. Travelling. Travelling. And the didn't write the last one. Mm -hmm. Didn't write the last one. ذلك <laughs> Any sujood, whether it's obligatory prayer or sunnah prayers. Any sujood, yes. No. Which is why, from the, the etiquettes of being imam, that you shouldn't rush in your sujood. Yeah, so you can give the musalleen time to make dua in sujood. So the manners of being imam. No. I don't know. Which one? Fifth point. Fifth point. Of which fifth point? So many numbers. Mm. Fifth one. What's the fifth one now? Number five? Dubur Salah. That one. Okay, you want to mention the... Okay. The narrator is Abi Umama. The Messenger Sallallahu mentioned in the middle of the night, the last part of the night. Yeah? And Dubur Salah. And Dubur is a big khilaf between the ulama. What's the meaning of Dubur Salah? Some of the ulama have mentioned is before Taslim. And in some narrations, it's clear that it's after Taslim, like Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. That one is clear that's after Taslim. In this one, the ulama, they differed. But the correct opinion, Ibn Allah Ta'ala, is before Taslim. So you make dua before you say, Asalaamu Alaikum, Rahmatullahi Wa Barakatuh. Sheikh Mibaz mentions this as well. Rahimullah. No. You know, hmm? No. And others. Well, I don't know the difference. I don't know any hadith or anything to show the difference. But raise your hands, inshallah. But you know, you, when, when we're making a dua, it's not only one means we should try. So you raise your hands when you're making dua. Try and, and get up in the middle of the night, which is, shows us the virtues of uh, a suhoor as well. You know, eating suhoor. Sometimes uh, in Ramadan, we spend the last part of the night on suhoor. And really, we sh it's from the rahmah, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is that we're up at that time to eat. And you may use that time also for dua. 
Femtenin. Obviously, we've done witr with the Imam in Qiyam al uh, So you can play two, two, you can play two rakats afterwards. Two, two, two. But fundamentally, you make du'a at that time. And we make, raise your hands, so you choose the time to make the, raise, to make the du'a between the adhan and the karma. Raise your hands. You mention Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's name that is suited to your request. Ya alim alimni. Oh, the all know it, give me knowledge. Ya wahhab. Razakni or Razak, or the one who provides the bestower, provide for me. So you use the names of Allah that is specific, which shows the importance of studying Tawheed al Asma wa Sifat. And also, it shows us the despicable methodology of the Jahmiyyah, the Mu'tazila, who deny Allah's names. That this is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which in the Quran and in the Sunnah, in the Quran from the way of the Anbiya wa Rusul, as we showed here, from Musa alayhi salatu wa and likewise, in the Sunnah of the Messenger Sallallahu that we use the names of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, which I left, I didn't mention it in the dust today, as a means, a wasila, as a means to ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Yeah, so you use more than one. I know. So forget all of these. There you go. No. This one. <laughs> I have to look at the handwriting, huh? This one. This one. Oh. Oh. Hmm. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa alaikum salam wa May Allah preserve you, Allah preserve you too. Can you advise the sisters on the etiquettes of attending classes in the masjid? Sisters are talking during the lesson and kids are talking without mothers educating them on how to behave. Okay, with this question, uh, I'll mention three things. The first thing, the etiquettes of seeking knowledge is for both men and women. And that is that, um, I'm not talking about my lessons, by the way. Let's say that, let's talk about when we sit with the ulama, shaykh al ulama, is that we're dressed appropriately and we're dressed in a way that um, justifies the knowledge that we're seeking. And we take that from the Hadith of Jibreel, that's number one. And number two, and that we have, we, uh, um, we are attentive because it's dhikr of Allah. Seeking knowledge is remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As uh, we know in the hadith, مَجْتَمَعَ قَوْمٌ فِي بَيْتِ مِنْ بِيُوتِ اللَّهِ يَتْلُونَ كِتَابَهُ يَتَدَرُسُونَ بَيْنَهُمْ إِلَّا نَزَلَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ مُسَكِينَةً وَغَشِيَتَمُ الرَّحْمَةً وَذَكَرُمُ اللَّهُ فِي مَعِنْدَهُ كَمَا قَالَ صَلَى اللَّهِ سَلَمَ In the hadith of the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم said that our people do not come uh, together in the houses from the houses of Allah um, with, uh, studying his book reciting it amongst them and studying it, except that tranquility befalls them. So the manners of the student of knowledge is imperative. That yatluna kitab Allah, that they're reciting the book of Allah, meaning that they're focusing on that which they're reciting, yatadarasunahu baynahum, that they're studying it amongst themselves, they're focused when they're studying amongst themselves, and they are attentive. And from the manners as well, that our sitting with our mashaykh and I repeat I'm not talking about attending my lessons I'm talking let's use the ulama because this is these are the fundamental teachers the scholars like the likes of Sheikh Rabi ibn Hadi Sheikh uh, Abdullah Bukhari Sheikh Salih Fawzan Alama Salih Fawzan and other than them is that we go we take a pen we write we take down notes and taking down notes even if you know it's imperative it aids in the folk and you focus in and also, it um, helps you memorize uh, the lesson uh, when you're using your hawas, when you're using your senses. So no doubt we're looking at the sheikh. Uh, for example, when you sit in the classes of Sheikh, uh, sheikh Salih al-Fawzan, you look at Sheikh Salih al-Fawzan, yes, you see him, you learn from his manners, which is important. But also your writing notes 
and that aids in memorizing the benefits from the Shaykh. Barakallahu feekum. And as the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Qayyidu al-ilma bil kitaba. Engrave knowledge by writing. Uktubu anni. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, write from him, alayhi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So when you're busy yourself with writing and you're busy yourself with taking notes, talking becomes redundant. Sahih wa I know. If it's a trial for you, then you should try and write. So that's the etiquette. As regards to the children, I um, don't think it's on our place to say that a mother is not educating a child. It's um, because we don't know what happens at home. And a, a parent can be uh, one that makes a lot of ijtihad in cultivating their daughter or their son, but the son is naughty, as you know. And uh, we should make uh, excuses for our sisters and perhaps advise them to go to the back of the, the um, masjid with their child or take them outside if it's not raining or it's cold and calm them down and uh, advise our sisters with this because um, I'm of the opinion that it's important that we accommodate our mothers as we accommodate the single sisters to come to the masjid, especially in um, this uh, dola kafira, this fitan, this trials, afflictions in the streets. The masjid is the place of raha, sahola. It's a place of tranquility that they deserve also to experience. However, if the child is uncontrollable, as Sheikh Anna obeyed, in his, uh, his durus, Sheikh Ubaid al-Jabi rahimahullah ta'ala, in his lesson he advised the sisters when the child is just screaming and, you know, disrupting everyone, basically take the child outside and calm him down and calm them down. This is how, uh, it's my advice regarding this. See, uh, take notes, focus on the lesson. If you need to talk, then you can, you know, if you have something pressing to say, then you should perhaps um, go outside for a little bit and, and say that which is important because sometimes there's something important that needs to be said. You may have a phone call, an emergency and what have you, then go outside so you can um, aid the other sisters in focusing now. But generally we should have mercy with each other and understand that it's not easy being a, a parent and seeking knowledge at the same time. Can I make du'a in English in my salah? Yes, you can. So ulama have said you can make du'a in that which is more, um, you're more eloquent in speaking, but no doubt du'a in Arabic is a term, du'a in Arabic is better. Can you give advice for one looking to get married? What are the best steps? I think we studied this, no? We did, right? No. Just generally, um, if it's a sister, you should leave that responsibility to your wali. If it's a sister, a sister you leave it to your, um, your father uh, or your brother to help you find uh, uh, a brother and um, trust the judgment of your father. And if it's a sister who's a revert and she doesn't have Muslim parents, then she should uh, contact uh, her local markas, a local masjid, with elder brothers, the older brothers in that markas, the elder brothers in that centre, to aid her and take that responsibility with aman and with taqwa in aiding her. And from there, the brother would obviously help find out about the individual. But what I would like to add regarding the importance of choosing a correct spouse is to look for uh, beyond wealth. Obviously, you look for wealth and the four affairs that the Messenger Sallallahu mentioned, but the fundamental one that he mentioned was the religion. Look at the etiquettes of the man and some of our uh, brothers and sisters uh, a bit naive. They asked the person about themselves and they said, yeah, he says he's good. Or he says he's, you know, he's a pondeen. No, we find out who his companions are. Al Maru ala dini khalilihi. We find out who his companions are, and also we ask the community: Is he somebody who is in a masjid? 
Does he somebody who attend the lessons? We ask those who are close to him, how is he with his mother? Does he respect his mother? Does he respect his father? Does he speak over his mother? Does he show anger to his mother? Because if that is the case, that he is disrespectful to his mother, the sister doesn't have a chance. Because if one cannot show birr and righteousness to the one that carried them nine months, no one has a chance. So a good way to look is to look how they are with their parents, how they are with those who are older than them, and how they are with those who are younger than them. Are they merciful to the younger ones? Are they respectful to the elder ones? These are the elements, some of the elements, and many things depending on the individual, but aham shay a taftish, that the person has to be very strict as to whom they take as a spouse, asking the right questions, and nam. Allah alam. وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين خلاص اسنا في ان شاء الله بارك الله فيكم والسلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته